Hey y'all, welcome to our YouTube channel. My name is Asia from Ready Church. Thank you for joining us in another opportunity to hear about the grace of God. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Enjoy the so video. Listen, man, what we're going to do is I want to come from the word of God and I'm going to stop talking because I want to hear them talk. So listen, the Bible says this. Watch me. The Bible says this in Proverbs 18, 24. Write the scripture down. Proverbs 18, 24. Watch me. A man who has friends must show himself to be friendly. You ever heard somebody say, I don't have any friends? Listen, a lot of times the reason why they don't have friends is because they don't know how to be friendly. And that's understandable because people have trust issues. But in order to have friends, you need to show yourself friendly. Does that make sense? Yeah. But watch me. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. There's a friend. Watch me. There's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. One of the things that I, I like to say is that I don't have friends. I have family. And all of my friends come from outside of my family, but I love them and I pull them into my heart as if we are family. So what I want to do is, man, I want to just I want to start with Dale. We'll go this way. I want to know what is a good friend in one word. Ally. OK, ally. What about you? It's kind of more than one word, but the word that comes to mind is character. Mm, character. OK, OK. Uh, I would say support. Support. OK, so so why would you use the word support? I would say support because it kind of covers a lot of areas. Mm -hmm. So real, real friends are going to be there for you. Right, right, you right. Have to be, you have to be present to be a real friend. Mm -hmm. You don't got to be present all the time, but you have to be present in yeah. some, some form of fashion. It's yeah. so like our friendship used to be around each other every day. Right. Once right. our friendship has changed, right. you know, our lives have changed. Right. But we've all still remained our friendship because we've adapted and all still been friends. Right. You might not see you every day, but I can pick up the phone on my way on my way home from work and call, hey, we're good. Right. I like to call my friends. Right. right. I gotta see how they doing. I gotta hear how they doing. Right. Yeah. right. Good, bro. Right. right. Yeah, how they doing? Check on this stuff like that. So I say support. Right. Because it means that you're present in some form. Right. And when you need some help, your friends should be there for you. So let me, so let me, so let me ask you this. You you use the word ally and he used the word adapted. How how do you remain an ally to somebody when your life has changed and their life has changed and you have to adapt to those changes. How do you remain an ally in that? I think first off is remember why you were friends in the first place or what, what we've already built on. Yeah. Because of what we built on, it doesn't matter what has happened in our life, I'm still there for you yeah. and you and whoever else that may be. Yeah. So I think those are the things of removing yourself because it's the self that gets us in trouble in a lot of friendships. Because you talk about oh, stay on that, stay on that. Wait, what does that mean? Stay on, stay on that. <laughs> yeah, what gets us that self gets in trouble because let's say this, you were the first one married with children and, and all this within our friend group here. And personally, we said, hey man, why can't they with us no more? Why can't they not doing this? Why, why Pastor Steve's not doing this, etc." And we start thinking about us because we want you there, but now we understand that you have more to support. Mm. And but being there, like, how can we support our brother in this new season? Come on. So I think that's the biggest thing as you talk when I say ally, you need me for being an ally. I might not always agree with every decision, but when you need me and I know I can support you, I'm always there. Mm. So you said character. How because I believe in friendships that there, there, there needs to be reciprocity. But when life changes, how do you support the change and understand that you might not get what you got in other seasons? Am I making sense? No, for sure. I think that's where your friendship has to be deeper than um, deeper than like in any one experience. Right. Mm. Like if we boys just because we get up and we all like going to the Hornets game. Right. 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 right and that's right. all we do is go to the Hornets game. We right, go to the Hornets right. game. You get married. You can't go to the Hornets game right. like you used to. Right. 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 Or you have kids and you have other commitments. You can't go to the Hornets game like you used to. Mm. That's why I use the word character, because that just has like a sense of shared value. So mm. I know that um, even when we even when our circumstances change, mm -hmm. Again, it's bigger than mm -hmm. us going to the Hornets game. Mm -hmm. Like you are, you're my brother. I want to see you succeed in whatever it is. So, mm -hmm. how do I support you in that change? Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. So, it's um, that's why I use the word character, and that's how you, that kind of like relates to being able to support people in those changing seasons. Yeah, is that like your friendship is deeper than any one circumstance or one hobby? You know, it's it's, it's doing life right. with another person in, right. in a specific context. Right, right. And real quick, um, I was saying support. Dale said, "Ah, oh, that was good because." Also, you don't have to agree on every single thing mm -hmm. 
to still be supportive and be there. Come on, say that again, bro. You, That's you good. Can be an ally and not be perfectly and not believe exactly the same thing. Yeah. Because we've all we probably grew up all the same. We used mm-hmm. to be in the gym every day, hooping, mm-hmm. go to school, go to church. Mm-hmm. Our lives have completely changed. We've all gone to different industries. Mm-hmm. We're all doing different things right now, but we still can be there and support each other, even though things that we've we've done have changed. Yeah. Like, we even think the same. Dude. Yeah. We think about different things right. right now. Right. It's more important to us. Right. But we still can be there and be supportive of each other. Yeah. I think one example of that for me is when um I used to say all the time when they would tweet something about the, the uh, Charlotte art scene, I would have absolutely no idea what he's talking about. But I would still retweet it because that's my guy. That's my man's. So I know his character and I know that what he's talking about must have integrity behind it. And I think that's one word. I think in order to have longevity and friendships, there needs to be integrity. There needs to be some type of integrity. So I want to throw this to y'all. What, and just, and just blur them out, what is one word that describes friendship to you guys? Loyalty. Loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. loyalty. Okay, 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 okay. Consistency. Consistency, yes. Consistency. Accountability. Accountability. Oh, we getting to that one. That's good. So you said loyalty, consistency, accountability. Give me another one. These are good. Give me another one. Honesty. Ah, oh, that's tough. Mm-hmm. It's tough. Listen. Say it again. Genuine. 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 I'm, say it again. Grace. Grace. Oh, come on now. Don't start teaching. Don't start teaching now. When I hear that word, you know, I, go, I go off now. Come on now. Grace. Yes, that's good. Come on. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Validation. Validation. Validate. Okay, explain that one. Explain that one to me. Validation. Um, I think he kind of alluded to it. You can, you can empathize and really validate someone's feelings. Mm, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can still love you even though I don't agree with your Right, right, right. And see, and that's key, what she just said, because one thing in friendships, you have to separate what people do from who they are. You, you, you have to separate that. So my, my next question is this. How do you separate or determine a friend versus an associate? And, 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 and I don't want to make the question complicated. I want to stay there, but, but this, is how, this is what I want to know. How do you determine the difference between a friend and an associate? And how do you know when someone has turned from a friend into an associate? Mm. Let, let's navigate that for a minute. The reverse kind of took me back a little bit. I was like, okay, wait, let me flip the script. <laughs> flip the script on that one. I think um, for me, uh, what delineates a friend from an associate, because I um, do a lot of things, obviously, creatively, business-wise, and run into a lot of people and was responsible for building, like, you know, a community organization, all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. And my business is centered in community, so I know a lot of folks in passing. I see mm-hmm. a lot of people at events. I think one of the things that distinguishes for me who I consider to be friends versus, like, people that I just kind of see on the scene and, and doing stuff is, um, am, I, am, am I or the other person being intentional about spending time with each other outside of that context? Yeah. Like, it would be, it's different, like, oh, I know so-and-so from going to this or going to that, yeah. and I see him around, but it's like, do I know your last name? Do I know how many siblings you have? Like, do yeah. I know, have we built, have we started to build connections? Do we get up and go to lunch every once in a while? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. what's, the in, what's the intentional kind of interaction outside of the context where we would just normally see each other? Mm-hmm. And for me, that's when you start to, to migrate from a, um, from that associate, I see you around to like moving more towards a friendship and mm-hmm. building like a relationship with somebody. Mm-hmm. And I think in the opposite, I think it can work in the opposite direction to address the second part of your question where, um, you know, the classic saying people, are, some people are in your life for reasons, right. some people right. are in your life for seasons. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that, mm-hmm. right? You can still want somebody to do well, but your paths just may, um, you know, not be aligned yeah. um, for us for beyond that, that period of time. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think that's, that's part of it too, to Fox's point earlier, it's like, when I talk about doing, you know, doing life with, with folks, it's like you intentionally merge those paths together. It could be a point where if you want to decide to say, stay, you know, marriage is kind of a go-to example, but if you want to decide to stay single, somebody gets married, you could just be like, okay, word, that's not going, yeah. I don't want to go to the family barbecues or right. it's weird for me to go, like whatever the reason right. might be. Right, right, And right. you may just roll out of, you know right. what I'm saying? Right, Being intentional about spending time or reaching out with that person because things don't align anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's how I think the, that's how I think the scale works. It's about, like any relationship, whether it's a romantic one, a friendship, it's about choosing to intentionally include that person. So five point, checking in, yeah. seeing how people are doing, like that's kind of what, to me, the, what distinguishes a friend from 
somebody that you may see around right. or somebody that you know by face or by name. Right. So what's the difference between a friend and associate to you? So one thing I look for in all the relationships that I have mm-hmm. is they need to make me better in some way. Mm-hmm. And, and I believe you got to have synergy. So I need to be able to make an impact to their life. Yeah. And they need to make an impact to my life. Yeah. So whether that's professionally, whether that's spiritually, whether that's socially, you need to have an impact. Yeah. I had to look at myself this past year. I was just doing some doing some self-reflection on me. Yeah. I know a lot of people. Yeah. And I, I call it a lot of people. You used to call everybody my friend. Yeah. But then I had to look at it because people would call me, hey, Foss, we go over here, let's do this, let's do this. And I'll be chill. I'm like, I'm going to pull up. Mm-hmm. But then I had to look at it about what was I really getting out of all those interactions, all that mm-hmm. time I was mm-hmm. spending. Yeah. We were just hanging out. I wasn't really getting nothing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I was providing some benefit to those people. I wasn't really getting nothing in return. So I had to look at some mm-hmm. of those relationships that I thought I had. Okay. And feel like, hey, is this really making me better? Yeah. No. I'm, I'm giving out because I'm just a giving person and I'm yeah. just doing it in general. Is that person doing the same to me? Yeah. And had to put the, some people in a different category. Yeah. Yeah. So you always got to be conscious of that. You may have a good time with people, enjoy hanging out with people, which I do, but you got to look at the underlying factor of do they make an impact on my life? Yeah. And do they fit into my life where I'm at and mm. where I'm wanting to go right now? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So how do you know when, because we know people years back how do you know when you are my dog in eighth grade you are my dog in the 10th college hit now the loyalty we had before it's not that it's not there it's just that my life has changed so how to navigate that transition from friendship to associate and when to when to stay when to like cling to that friendship or when to let it go i think an example here i think it was from the Five love languages, mm-hmm. when you start talking about the deposits and withdrawals, mm. I think a big thing is you start to see a lot more withdrawals mm. than deposits from whatever individual, whatever mm-hmm. relationship, friendship mm-hmm. it was at the time. Mm-hmm. And you start to look like this isn't a mutual, as um, Fox said, mm-hmm. a relationship where we're both winning, where yeah. we're both pushing each other, where we're both growing. It becomes, hey, what can I take from you? Yeah. And it's not even, it's, it's selfish and it's self-centered to some yeah. degree. And that sounds like very heavy words, but we all have that and we have relationships that are that way. Right. Meaning, hey, I call them every time I get a car rental. Right? That's the only reason I call them. Come and on now. It's the only relationship. It's transactional. Mm, that's, relationship? A, that's a good word. It's transactional. We yeah. don't have that more um, companionship of going back and forth and making sure we're pushing each other to a better level. We understand, going back to what David already said was, um, the seasons and you have to it takes that self-reflection yeah so it doesn't just happen out of anger yeah but like man you and it's that more conflict yeah. created because yeah. they're no longer that same friend they yeah. used to be yeah but it's understanding it's cool because yeah. you're an associate yeah we still can mingle we still can talk but yeah. it might change with how i can find you yeah moving forward right. and what i'm willing is to drop on your behalf um because i think definitely we start talking about these seasons changing it is you have to be very special in my life now for me to drop something when I have a family, come on, here, come on. Else. So as I start thinking about, if Kane called me, Pastor C called me and said, "Hey, I need this." Okay, cool. I'll drop some things for him, mm-hmm. right? And it's still level, levels for all this right. of our relationships. But ex person from seventh grade called me. It's a fire drill for them. Okay, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Your emergency doesn't make it my emergency. So I just come on. You start that self reflection. Help us to understand what season. For those different relationships yeah. and yeah. we can go back to our bros well. yeah man you all you all are, are in a theme and i want i want to i want to just throw this question off the cuff talk to me about friendships and resources because sometimes when you have friends who are connected to certain things talk to me about how to navigate when because you said you only call me when you need a car rental, right? Help me navigate how to be a friend and not make the other friend feel used when they are connected to something you need. Am I making sense? Mm-hmm. You know, like, like, like help me with that because I think, I think a lot of times people can have resources to things and you may need it. I give you a perfect example. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All right, y'all remember, y'all ever seen Insecure? Okay, but people watch Insecure. If you ain't watching, spoiler alert. Y'all remember when um, Issa needed an artist for the concert? And um, what's the homegirl name? Molly didn't want her man to uh, hook the artist up, but Issa went behind her back 
to talk to homeboy, think of that scenario. If you ain't never seen Insecure, I apologize. That's the only example that could come to mind for me to explain it to you. So, ex so help me with that. Help me with like resources and friendships and connections and how to navigate that whole space. Oh. Um, so I think for me, it's about understanding um, the context in which your friends exist and what their role is. Mm. And if it's going to be like a stretch for them to be able to do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, are you really calling in a favor or is yeah. it just like, you know what I mean? Something that falls into their warehouse. So it's yeah. like, oh, I got a, I, I got a system that's built for that. All right. Good, right. Right. Like, right. Um, so it's, I'm trying not to get like too philosophical yeah, about nah, it, but for me, like I said, I think it's, it's like, you know that I have access or proximity, but is that going to be, am I going to have to use some juice to get what you actually need? Or is it something that I could actually just provide? Mm. I think understanding that is extremely important so that mm -hmm. you know the, the, the quality of your, you know what I mean? Like how big of an ask you're actually making. Because mm -hmm. you might be like, oh, bro, I want to talk to so-and-so. And I'm like, bro, I, me and so-and-so only met maybe a couple times. Right. Like you may have seen me with right. them somewhere right. or something like right. that. So you think right. like we tight, but it's like, right. bro, I didn't really like that. Right. So right. being able right. to have that conversation, I think being able to know um, and understand whether it is like business or what your friend's job is or whatever it is, having a really good understanding of what they do can help you inform how to navigate that. Cause you may need to, they may point you in another direction that mm -hmm. would be an easier path. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? As opposed to like it just being out of context and being weird. Like it, yeah. can, it can just get weird when it's like, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It's like one of those things, like I, everybody know where I used to work. And if you came to me and was like, Hey bro, I want you to get me these for the low and blah, blah, blah. It's like, that's not how that works. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like right, I, right. That, that would be right. me like stepping right. out of context right. to be able to make that ass work. You know what I'm saying? As opposed to being able to say like, yo, you might want to check out this spot or check mm -hmm. out being able to do this or mm -hmm. check out being able to do that. So, um, yeah, that's kind of how I think about it is understand the context of, of what your friends are doing. You know what I'm saying? Is yeah. it going to be a value to them? Is it going to be a benefit to them yeah. as opposed to just thinking about what you need? Right. Right. Like when I, when, um, Fox was at his old job, you know what I mean? And we started renting cars at my job. It right. was like, well, I'm gonna go to Fox's branch because I know that's a value add right. to him to right. increase the numbers right. that he's got going, all right. that kind of stuff. Right. So I'm gonna go do business over there. Right. That's something that falls completely in context. He ain't got it. It's already a system set up. It's mm -hmm. just gonna boost his numbers. It's mm -hmm. a win-win, mm -hmm. right? So I think trying to position, if you need something, trying to figure out how is that gonna be a win-win or is it a possibility for it to be a win-win as opposed to just being a favor yeah. is extremely important. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna say, um, if you, if I'm gonna give it person, and mm -hmm. I believe that if you can help your friends, you should do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, everybody does self reflection at the beginning of the year. I had to do self reflection on myself about yeah. this ministry. Yeah. I would watch the ministry every Sunday. I wouldn't always be here, and mm -hmm. I would blame it as an excuse on my work schedule. But then I had to think about it. My brother really needs me to support him. Mm -hmm. he needs me to be there physically. I need to be here so I can hang out with my nephews. Mm -hmm. I want to be a part of their life, mm -hmm. and I need to give money and mm -hmm. in, in, in impact to the ministry. Mm -hmm. I was going through my finances. Mm -hmm. I blowing money on this, blowing money on mm -hmm. that. Why am I not giving more money to Ready Church? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Why am I not showing up? Yeah, my work schedule is an excuse. I am busy. Can I change my work schedule to be at church on Sunday? I mm -hmm. can't. Mm -hmm. And so this year I've been for Sundays I've been here because I've been mm -hmm. making it making it intentional yeah. because my time. Is a resource that I need to provide to my brother. Come on now, that's good. That's good. That's good. So that's you, good. Have to, you have to be there. If you can give it, you should give it to your friends. Yeah. And then you have to be, you have to just trust your friends. Yeah. Because if if I call Dale and I need something, he's like, bro, I, like I can't do it. I gotta trust him. He's my brother. Come on. He's saying yeah. He can't do it. Yeah. For the reason. Right. Yeah. Right. And, right. You know, we, we make another way. God right. provide another way. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? But right. I can't be mad at him if I'm asking him because I know that's my brother. I know if he could help me, he would. Right. And I can't hold that against him because that's that's gonna be that's gonna be negative energy and friendship that we don't need. Yeah, yeah. Speak, speak, speak to that. That's that takes that takes vulnerability and honesty to tell a friend no. It's easy though. <laughs> For you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I say it's easy is because of, first off, our self-reflection, our growth has happened in mm -hmm. so many different mm -hmm. ways. But I think if if I say anything to you, even mm -hmm. out of context, mm -hmm. tomorrow we're good still. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's the reason why we can say no. Mm -hmm. And then two, if I said no, I think one of the biggest things I work, I've learned in my career growth is you can never just say no, give me a solution. The solution can be horrible. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm gonna provide another solution. Right, right. Hey, Dale Fox coming to me, hey, I need this, this, and this. Hmm. 
no, I can't do it, but this is another thing that we can figure out a way mm -hmm. to get what you need right mm -hmm. now. And I think mm -hmm. that's that partnership of saying, hey, yeah. what can that's the word right there. Come on. To make this work still. And I think that other part of that too, where you start talking about how do we have give gifts and friends, et cetera, I think a big part of that goes back to um, respect mm -hmm. and appreciation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Respect me when you come with me and then show me appreciation as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Once again, we, this is something just more so my upbringing. Appreciation was always big. Yeah. Anytime, I don't care how little or how small it is, if you don't show appreciation, yeah. It comes right, right, right. And that right. can be a trigger that right. somebody say that is yeah. growth, et cetera, yeah. for myself. But I think that's the biggest thing of just being direct of what you can do and what you can't do. Come on. Because if I say yes, if he needs something monetary, and I know I just had a son, and there's other needs in our life right now, and I go do that for him, what am I doing for my own family yeah. as well? That's not good for our friendship, yeah. and that's not, he wouldn't want to do that. Yeah. In other words, any, any real friends as well. Yeah. So I think that that's that truth of just having to have those understandings and context, and that's a safe place of a true friendship. Yeah. Of, and I think, too, this is, once again, speaking from our friend group, from what I think about the most male species when it comes to our disagreements, mm -hmm. it's a disagreement with our friends, and tomorrow we're good. It's not something that we allow. We don't carry a lot. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. People hold grudges. Yeah. But I think a lot of times we can fight on this stage, mm -hmm. and tomorrow, hey, bro, what you doing for breakfast? Right. You know, like right. that's right. just right. 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 that right. Right. forgiveness right. and grace that right. someone mentioned earlier. Right. 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 You also got to know what's important to your friends. So mm -hmm. I'll give an example. Dale is married. Lauren was pregnant at the time, and it was around my birthday time. Mm -hmm. I like to celebrate my birthday. I right. Like three days from my birthday. Right. 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 Dale can't hang out for me three days no more. Right. He got stuff going on. So I might ask him to hang out three days. He don't tell me no. But yeah. then I can adjust my plans to fit him in there. Yeah. If I want him in there, and he know, and I can tell him, Yo, bro, I really want you to be here. Yeah. So instead of doing something all day, something late at night, yeah. I can do something during the day. Yeah. Dale and Lauren came, supported me, which I really appreciate. Yeah. And I and I adjusted my plans to make sure that they could be involved as well. Yeah. Yeah. So it takes synergy, like I said. Yeah. That's why I believe synergy is really important. Yeah. Man, the Holy Spirit was ministering to me as y'all were talking, man. I, I I think one of the things that He wants me to say right now is that when you bless your friends, don't put your heart in the box. When you bless your friends, don't put your heart in the box. Because a lot of times what we do is we bless with the expectation of automatically getting something back. When, when I bless, how God blesses is how we should bless. I bless, and when I bless, I gave it because I want to bless you. I'm not doing it because of me. Right? I think another thing, I think another thing is, I think in friendships, you have to have the discernment. This is where the Holy Spirit comes in. You have to have the discernment when you're being a contributor versus an enabler. That's tough to navigate because if somebody, there, there are some people who may have the wrong, who, who, may not have, who may not have bad intentions, but they're just not cognitive cognizant of the simple fact that I keep coming to you over and over and over with the same thing. My, listen, if I can contribute to their lives in any way, I got them. But if you keep coming to me every other week asking for $50, my man, that's when I'm going to ask, yo, are you okay? Are, are, you, are you okay? I ain't got no problem giving you bread, but my man, this is like four times and like, you know, I'm going to just check on you because it's like, Yo, if you keep coming back, yo, if I got a resource to where you can just get fifty dollars all the time, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go deeper, and then too, I feel like when it comes to resources and friends, I think that you have to always be aware of the fact that, like, yo, I need, I, I want to make sure that the relationship is the greatest resource, not what they can provide. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's not what they can do, it's who they are. That's the greatest resource right there. Because I think a lot of times we say, oh man, they connected to so-and-so. Nah, I'm connected to them. So if I need encouragement, that's a resource. If I need somebody to talk me off a leg because I'm about to jump, that's a resource. Go ahead, go ahead. So yeah, so I'm glad you said that. Um, you said you'll bless to your friend without putting the heart yeah. in the box. Right. Trying to see something back. Right. Like yeah. If you're, like, like Dan was saying earlier, um, and that resonated with me because if you 
feel like if you keep a score on what you do for your friend and how much they Come on. You, yeah, that, that's, that's a foundation for a really, a really bad relationship. Yeah. And we don't do that in our, in our strongest relationships. Like, right, you know, right, right. It might be a stretch for like your mom. When you was growing up, she didn't keep track of how much you did for her. She just did for you because that was your, your right, mom. Right, right, right. Or, or, or your child. Like, you don't, you don't keep score in those relationships. And those are our strongest relationships. Yeah. Or even with me in church or with Jesus. Like, we don't. Right. The blessing he give us and how well we That's right. To Come on. That That's good. So, but like our culture makes our friendship so transactional. It's like, can you do something for me if you can't? We're not friends. I, I, I feel like if you go from a friend to an associate, that's something that happened wrong here. Because I got friends from when I was uh, uh, 15, 16 years old to mm-hmm. today. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm at a different place than where they are. Yeah. Like I got friends that don't have license, friends that Right. My car. So they're like in a way different stratosphere for me. But we all from the same spot. Those are still my friends. I might go six months without talking to them. Yeah. When we pick up the phone, we back on the same thing. Like it, like you never missed a beat. They don't go from a friend to an associate because we ain't talk or because we're in different places because our friendship is not based on what you do for me, what I can do for you. Right, right. I, I've done a thousand things for them that like they can never catch up about keeping it like that. Like, you know mm-hmm. what, bro, I can't hang out with you no more because you can't. I done took you to uh, 7-Eleven a thousand times. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right, like, right. Like, that's wild to me. I don't need that. Yeah. Like, our friends are like that now. We have a friend that can't do something for us. Our spirit, our spirit will get, will get like, like, you know, like irritated. Like, mm-hmm. like, I feel that. Either. So, like, I think you got to really sit back and, like, if you got somebody that's truly your friend, they, they your friend, it should be for that, 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 that personal or a deeper reason. Right. Like I said, like, right. I got a homeboy. He, he, he don't drive. He smoke weed all day. He don't do that. Right. But when he calls me, we, we laugh. Mm-hmm. We laugh like crazy. Right. And that fills right. me up every time. He can't give me no right. money. He can't take me nowhere. He can't do nothing for me. Right. But that's my boy. When I got something right. in my life, something bad in my life, I holler at him and we just chop it up. And that's it. Right. I want to speak to. I want to speak to this scripture. The Bible says this in Proverbs 27, verse 17. Watch this for sign. It says, as iron sharpens iron. So a man sharpens the countenance of his friends. As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friends. Iron sharpens iron, right? Which means that your friends are supposed to make you sharper. Stay with me. Stay with me. But this is the thing. You can't have iron sharpening iron without friction. There needs friction. So what I want to speak to now, and I'm going to come to you, Darius. I was like, did you raise your hand? Yeah. I'm, I'm, going to come to, I'm going to come to you after we answer this one. I want to speak to, let's navigate, how do you handle conflict and friendship? And the reason why, one of the things that I hate, I hate how we brag about cutting people off. Right. Mm-hmm. I, 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 if you do that, that's your thing. I, I've never done that. I've never done that. I've never bragged because I had to cut somebody off. Whenever I had to like disassociate myself from somebody, I felt it. And maybe just because I was invested, because when I call you my friend, you my dog. And when I call you my, like you, you my dog. So if I had to, and and mind you, I haven't really separated myself from a lot of people. I can count on my hand how many I have. So I want to speak to conflict and friendship and how do you know when you come back from it? And how do you know when, when, when a friend has crossed the line? Yeah, you, you go ahead, you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of just conflict and friendship. I want to make it deeper because I've been in different, like you said, we're all in right. different phases. Right. Like going back years where right. conflict was right. something different right. than what it is now. Um, but I think a lot of it was addressing it, first off and foremost, first most of just addressing the issue. And no, we, we don't talk about it, right? And really addressing it hand on from that conflict. Because a lot of times I feel as if we go back to those relationships where you start thinking about, hey, we grew apart, we never addressed the matter. We said it and then all of a sudden we kept talking it up with everybody. Come on. Else. Come on. Sudden, Come on. I don't rock with him. I don't rock Come with on. whoever anymore. So I think the biggest thing is like addressing that conflict. And that conflict can be like, hey, you hurt me. You you did this, you hurt me. Right. And it's not always sweet when that, that happens. Definitely, if someone thinks you understood it incorrectly. Yeah. And I think about, oh man, perfect conflict. My line brother, 
remember he, he gave me a call one day. He was like, hey, I heard something, 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 talking to a girl, something with a female, and he thought I had something to do with it. And it was a weird situation because I thought I'm about to fight my line brother, probably the closest person to me. You about to fight him? I didn't know what was going on. He was upset about the female. Oh, yeah. He called me up. So ain't no, ain't no we were outside ain't the no parking lot. Throw hands. The thing was, it was addressing the situation. I was mm -hmm. like, call the female. Yeah. Let's all just have this conversation. Like, yeah. I don't know what's about to happen, but we're going to tackle this either way. This is still my line brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? We've been through too much and all that other yeah. stuff. But it was sitting there, and then sitting on the phone, she said, oh, he didn't do that. And then we looking at each other like, why are we out here? Yeah. Hug it out, dab it up. We all good. But the biggest thing was, not running from that conflict and friction because we built on too much, too many other things yeah. to get here. Yeah. And I think I always go back to how did we get here? Meaning yeah. how would this friendship ever come to? Yeah. And that's what I'm always holding on to. So that goes back to you said cutting people off. Yeah. That hurts me. Yeah. Because I'm thinking about all the time we were roommates. We did this. We yeah. were football mm -hmm. here. We did this. Yeah. And this is going to be gone. Right. That That's how I feel in it too. That goes back to myself as well. Things I messed up. I'm like, I lost that person in my life because I made this decision. Mm -hmm. And I think it's always going back to where we started, mm -hmm. but not being afraid to that friction. Right, right, right. Yeah. Oh, real quick, yep. I, the, the reason why I got shocked, because I've, I've, I've seen Dale get mad twice, Lauren. Like, like, like really mad, like, I, I, I'll tell you two stories. So, we were on the bus, because I, I was on the basketball team. We was on the bus. We was on the bus one time, and there's this guy, he had, I don't know if you, you probably remember this, he had a snowball, he had like a snowball in his hand. And he was approaching Dale, and Dale, and I think Dale said, don't do it. And he did it. And Dale got up out of his seat. And, I, and it was weird because the hood went up over his head without him grabbing it. I remember this clearly. I remember this clearly. The, the, the hood went up over his head. And all of a sudden, Dale picked him up and body slammed him on the seats. Now, mind you, our buses back didn't have much cushion. So, <laughs> so it was a hard bus seat. And you literally heard it. And when he got back up, there was such a fire in his eyes. I was like, yeah, so this is a different guy, right? <laughs> it's a different guy. And the second time, me and him, he, I don't even know, you remember, me and him was at open gym. I don't know what happened when we was downstairs and I don't know, maybe I was tripping that day, but like, I don't know what I pushed him, but then afterwards I didn't push him no more. <laughs> I don't know, I, I don't know whether he body slammed me too long, but then there's been, there's been a certain respect level after that, uh, it's like, that's like, no, like you're the big brother for a reason. Like, yeah, like, like, no, like, and I apologized immediately afterwards. I was like, yo, I'm sorry. I don't want conflict with you ever again. You know what I'm saying? But like, I think, I think that was for me because that's, that's one thing that you have to, you have to know your friend's triggers and not push them. That's respect. Like, you know, because one of the things that I'm, I mark a true friend based on how you honor enemies. I've always said that I, 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 I base a true friend based on how you honor enemies. If you can't hold your old friend secret, you can't be my new friend. If y'all had, if, 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 if you, if you, it's almost like when people come to ready, when people come to ready and the first thing you do is dish your pastor, nah, cause you'll do the same thing to me. If I do something wrong, you do the same thing to me. So if you come to me and you say, man, homeboy, da, 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 and you just give out all their secrets. No, friendships need, friendships need vaults, vaults ain't able to work. When I put it in the vault, it ain't never coming out. It, it ain't, it ain't never coming out. So my bad. Go ahead. Excuse oh no, nah, you good. I wanted to I wanted to lean in on one of the points that uh, that Dale made in his in his story, mm -hmm. and it's just the fact that resolution in conflict requires uh, vulnerability. Right. Come on now. And right. Right. Of, right. Right. That's what a lot of that's what keeps a lot of people from getting to that resolution. Yeah. Um. In order to resolve that friction, you have to be able to say you hurt me, you mm -hmm. upset me for this reason. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I felt betrayed by this. Mm -hmm. um, or even on the other end, when you're trying to correct it, when you were wrong, it takes humility for you come to on, say, come on, come on. I wasn't the best friend for you in that situation. Come on, come on. And that's my bad. I apologize. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Will you forgive yeah. me? That's good. And um, just that, that vulnerability is, is, a, um, is a, it's a tough piece. And that's kind of, uh, 
where the where you can kind of start to have those like milestones and markers yeah. for your relationship for like oh dang bro really humbled himself and really said yeah, that or yeah, like yeah. he really opened up you know what yeah. I mean and or he or she really opened up and really you know really let me you know what I'm saying yeah. let me really see a, a true version of himself and I think that that's that, that that's when you start to again start to get to those deeper levels when you start when you start to have that relationship equity yeah and you can provide that's that good. vulnerability equity I like that um, I like that that's 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 how you start to resolve that right like per, yeah. perfect example too like. <clears throat> when I was uh, when I was transitioning, going about to go full time in the business, I had been serving at the ministry in creative director role. I was roused about the ring. Yeah, yeah I and, to bring and, it up. and see, like I, I I'd never got a chance to tell you I do it on this public platform, but I appreciate the the grace you handled that situation with mm -hmm. because obviously you know what was going on in my life, you mm -hmm. know everything that was going on, you had seen everything and knew the trajectory that I was mm -hmm. on, but you could have easily been like, man, he don't want to serve no more, he ain't messing with bro no more. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. it could have been one of those things, like, damn, bro, you leaving us high and dry, you know right. where to, you right. know the situation, right. the organization. But you leaned into it when I was like, hey, bro, this transition is coming up and I got to reconsider how I'm allocating my time, my other resources, blah, blah, blah. He was like, oh, bro, we figured that out. That ain't nothing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we're yeah. going to be we're going to be straight. Right. Are you good? Is there any, he flipped right. the script on me. Is there anything you need in right. this transition right. for your life? Right. And I think, um, you know, that's that's like that could have easily been a situation where there was conflict. Yeah. But because of that relationship equity and because of that vulnerability yeah. and knowing what was going on. Yeah. You can start really. That's how you really start to again to Fox's point about being able to change his birthday plans to include Dale and Lauren. Right. Like that's what doing life with people look, come looks on, like. Come that's on. Me come on. Me changing yeah. my situation to account for you and have you as a part of my life. Right. And that should be a part of every healthy relationship, right. romantic, right. otherwise, yeah. um, friendships, etc. One of the things that I always tell my team, and it's something that I've always applied in my friendships, piggyback off this point, I always say this: I love the call of God on you more than I love you. If and, 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 and this is what we have to do as well. We, we have to be able, and this comes to relationship. I know what God is calling him to do. So I'm not going to be selfish in my friendship with him to hold him back. I know what God has called him to do. I knew when he came on staff that he wasn't going to be here long. And, and, let, and let me tell you this as well. You should never be, you should never be afraid to let people in your life flourish. I'm going to tell you this. Listen to me. If, so, if a friend has to move to California, God can send another one to North Carolina. God is in the business of replacing in your life whatever you need. We, got, we, we see that in Acts 1. When Judas died, what did the disciples do? We need somebody else. Because listen to me. The mission don't stop just because the players change. Just because the players change. If they'll if they'll move to Virginia, if he moved to California, if he moved to Japan, we still going to be friends. I'm not losing them, but there's an opportunity to gain others. Am I making sense? My bad, bro. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, just kind of piggybacking on what Dale said, just about everything. I think it's really important that you have to have empathy. Come on. That's a good word. You also have to be able to forget and forgive. Yeah. So you may have done something that did hurt me. Yeah. And made a withdrawal. Yeah. But if I see that you're actively trying to correct the situation. Yeah. You're actively in. I, I can tell you feel sorry. I can tell you were hurt. Yeah. Then okay, I need I need to take that into effect as well. Forget my feelings. Forget yeah. my ego. Yeah. Ego. Mm -hmm. That's try. a big one. I can, for an example, I remember one time, did her ask me to to, to to help him be accountable in a certain situation. Right. I was like, I got you, bro. Time goes on. I ended up walking him in a path directly against what he was trying to, directly mm -hmm. into what he was trying, right. not, trying not to do. Right, right. Right? And it ended up costing him for, for, for a certain, for a certain right. situation. Right. And he told me about it. He called me. I got the call. I'm like, man, I can't believe it. Like, it's, it's kind of my fault. Right. I was like, hey, so it was, I felt so bad. Like, I pulled, he, I knew he was, he was hurt. I pulled up on him, pulled to the crib. He in the crib chilling. We on the couch just sitting there. <laughs> I'm over there just like I'm sorry, bro. Like, I don't even know what to say to you, bro. And he could have been mad. Yeah. He could have spazzed on me, like because I he told me to hold him accountable. Yeah. And I, I wasn't. I didn't. I didn't hold him accountable. Right. Now, and it was on me. Right. And he had empathy in that moment. He, yeah. He he knew how bad I felt, and we just kind of sat there. Was you know we just sat there for like an hour and didn't say nothing. Listen, listen. And then we, Come on. we laughed it off and kept it moving. Listen. Know? But. So you have to you have to have empathy and, and know if you're even if your friends do something wrong, like one situation doesn't need to end the friendship as long as you can tell that they're actively trying to correct the situation. Right. 
and that they're really not, and that they're coming from a good place. I always say it's different. Accidental hurt is different from intentional hurt. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't really like a rock of people that try to do something on purpose to hurt. Yeah. Them. Right. 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 And right. so you got to know how to decipher between those things. Right. Go ahead, Darius. I want to get to you. You good? You good? Go ahead. You good? All right. Okay. Go ahead, Rutledge. I think one of the things that I would say about conflict is that you that when you see it brewing, address it quickly. Address it quickly. I'm gonna tell you something, man. The enemy loves to play with your mind when you have not had a conversation. I'm telling you, when when you know conflict is coming, immediately have a conversation. Do your best to immediately have a conversation immediately, because I'm telling you what will happen is you will suffer a connection because you did not allow your perspective to be answered by the person you're in conflict with. When you're isolated, the enemy will put stuff in your mind all day long. You know, they don't don't love you. Man, they did this to hurt you on on purpose. And you know, like, have you, like, have you, have you, have you ever been there and like, like, it go from a situation to a commercial, from a commercial to a movie. Mm-hmm. Now it's a Netflix series. <laughs> now you in season three. Like, I'm for real. It, it, it will go. And it'd be it will be 15 minutes. Right. You it, yeah. And, yeah and, and you, and you brewing. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. But I want to speak, so well, I want to speak to that because what you did was create definition. Yeah. Where there is no definition, there will be damage. Right. I love that because one thing that I've had to tell people is that when they when they when they call me about issues, I say you want Canaan or you want Pastor Canaan. Right. Because sometimes it's two different answers. Right. There have been times I've been on the phone with him. Now, he don't need a pastor right now. He just need Canaan. Right. Now don't get me wrong. The word of God is the word of God. Right. I ain't, I don't change on that. But there are certain times where he needs an answer from a friend. And not just a pastor. One requires more empathy. One has authority. When I'm a pastor, there's authority. There are certain times where I need a pastor. I give an example with Adarius. One thing Adarius, if you don't mind me sharing this, one thing Adarius called me on last week. You know, we, when Adarius calls me, he 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 says what he needs to say. And he said, "Man, listen." He said, "I stopped reaching out to you at a certain point because he felt as if I was telling him." what he needed to hear instead of what he wanted to hear. And I didn't tell him this, but the reason why I told him what he needed to hear is because he was coming to me as a pastor. He wasn't coming to me as a cousin. That's my cousin. He wasn't coming to me for that. If he was coming to me for that, I would say, I I would just hear you. Because there are times, and this is in friendship, listen, in friendships, sometimes people just need to vent. One of the things that will ruin a friendship is when you always try to prophesy somebody just need to get something off their chest. <laughs> I'm being for real. Some people don't, they don't always need to be prophesied to. Some people just need, some people just need to be, this is how I bleep, 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 bleep. And, and, that's, and that's where it is. Because listen, friendships need to be places where, they, where, where feelings are released. Because this is the thing too, I can't impart something that you're still holding on to. He needs to impart. He needs to, he needs to release. And then when the Holy Spirit allows me to, then I can impart. And sometimes that's two days from now. Sometimes that's three days from now. So I think there needs to be definition in our friendships where, listen, you need to. And this is so good. Relationships need language. You need language. Every friendship needs like my dog. You good? My, and, and when you say you good. That means step outside. When, when, when I say, hey, I, 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 need, I need you to walk outside with me. I, I, listen, hey, bro, it's, 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 a, it's a 012. I don't know what your language is. I don't know, a, a 012, whatever that means. That, hey, listen, me and my bros in college, when, 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 it went, when it was like, hey, somebody saw my phone. Oh, it's an 015, let's go. <laughs> what, what, what you need, <laughs> what you need, it, stuff like that. That's friendship. Because when I need you, when it, because it has language, I know how to respond. A lot of times we don't know how to respond to relations because we don't have language. So you're expecting me to respond one way and I don't know the language of this friendship because we never created it. That's so wild though because I feel like we got that but we never really said that. Right. <laughs> right. It's right. always like one of the things where you're like, bro, can I holler at you real yeah. quick? <laughs> right. Bro, whenever we hear one out, we like, hey, hey bro, let me holler at you real quick. Yeah. You know like, oh, okay. oh snap. Right. It's about to go what, down. What done happened? Right. right. <laughs> 
Right. So I think that's that's a beautiful thing. And listen, man, I love that. I love that. That's amazing. So wrapping this up, right? I, I think this is what I wanna um, I wanna end on this. Let's speak to longevity real quick. This is this is how we. This is over twenty seven years of friendship on the stage. How do you get? I'm gonna start with you. How do you get to longevity in a friendship? Uh, I mean, number one, I say just being genuine, just yeah. just being you and allowing your friends to be them. Yeah. Um, I've got I've got to allow you to, to be you and be authentic in what you do. Come on. You got to allow me to be authentic in what I do. Yeah. Um, and then just just like I said, just being supportive and being there, man. Yeah. If I can be there for you and I can help you, that's what I need to do. Yeah. And then just just make it an effort. So, like I said, I don't we don't hang out all the time. Right. You know what I'm saying? But as I'm driving home from work. I could take that 20 minutes. I could call my brother. Yo, bro, you good? How everything going, man? How, how look? Kana got a game this weekend? Yeah. All right, I'm going to try, try, try to make that, man. He good? Okay, what's, when is his birthday coming up? You know what right. I'm saying? Or, or reaching out to Dale to see what's going on. Or Dave, you know, Dave, you got an event coming up, bro? All right, I'm a, how many you got coming up? I can't make this much, but you know what, bro? I'm going to pull up. I'm going to pull up before summer ends. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And make sure, make sure that I follow up on that. Yeah, yeah. And so making sure that you follow up on what you, what you say you're going to do for your friends. That you be there and that you just be genuine and just right, be you. Right, 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 right. I think a big part of it when we get to longevity is allowing that partner, that friend to grow. Come on. Because I think a lot of the times we want something so bad for our friends. Yeah. And we even have those man to man, one Yeah. Whatever those conversations yeah. are about helping them grow. And then when you don't see them respond in the way that you got to based off of your great advice. Come on, <laughs> right, right. That you're like, what are you doing? What are you doing? That's okay. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to bounce every now and then. I might triple back in. Hey, man, how's this going? I know how it's going already, but I'm going to make you think about it and make sure it's still front of mind as your friend. But at the same time, you got to let them grow. Like, it's, I can't force feed you to Come be on. the man that I thought you should be. Come on, time. man. So I think those are the biggest things like within our friendship we allow that growth. Cause when I think about like you said, daycare, change saying change and take, okay, your turn, your turn, and getting changed. So it's like we've been together forever. And I always think about it is they call me big bro, but we like months apart. Yeah, we yeah, we yeah, we weeks apart. Yeah, <laughs> we we, 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 we <laughs> younger than you because right. I'm a big bro, but I understood what that meant for our relationship. Right. right, and understand my role in the relationship and what that meant. So I think once I became older, I think after college or towards the end of college, our relationships all grew a different way. Mm. Going to Duke to watch him play football. Once I graduated, going to his events. Now we were Canaan in his in his church and all these different <laughs> things. It's just like wow, I didn't know this was developing that, but it was because we were just genuine people. Yeah had integrity and were loyal to each other that were here. Yeah. You couldn't tell me at 15, this was like, oh, we're going to be together for life. We stuck now. And I think what I was right, like, right, 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 right. It's like to me, my child is in the back, his children are here. Hey, our friends got to be friends. Mm -hmm. They have no choice. Right. And they already talking, that's my cousin. Right, right, <laughs> right. Like, right. We didn't plan for this to yeah. happen. Yeah. We're just being men in of, of integrity. And that doesn't mean we always had integrity. There was times where it was like, yeah, you was wrong. Yeah. Me, I was wrong. But I think that's the thing of how we got here by acknowledging that and repairing. And once we repair, it's just like once in that bond just keeps getting stronger and stronger and stronger and we're here. Right. I gotta say too, real friends ain't haters. So you uh, should you definitely gotta your friends should be your biggest hype man. You come know? on. When come Kana, on. We can't come up here with a fly fit. Hey bro. <laughs> Boy, you look like money today, bro. <laughs> 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 David coming out with some dope merch. Hey, bro, I need all of them, bro. We, David came out with the hats. Hey, bro, I need every color. Yeah. All right, this going to be the Charlotte Yankees fitted, bro. I need right. everything. You know what I'm saying? Right. They yeah. got a new crib. Hey, bro, you know what Straight I'm up. Just make sure I get invited Straight to, up. to the cookout. Straight you know up, man. Saying? Listen, and piggybacking out there before you go, listen to me. Let me tell you something. You have to be okay with saying congratulations to somebody else if something ain't happening for you. Yeah. Listen, man, I'm, 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 I'm telling you now. I am in the season that I am in now. I know that it is a return on my seeds of congratulations. Because there were seasons where it was catapulting for him. It was catapulting for him. It was catapulting for him. And I felt like, God, what the heck am I doing? And the thing about it is, it wasn't that God wasn't moving. It was just my wrong perspective. Sometimes you got to check your heart. Because a lot of times you will get so... 
blinded by what everybody else got going on and you're not appreciative of what God is doing in you. So when, 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 when he posts something on Instagram, I don't know, hey, share. My man got a new house. Congratulations. And Lauren, we only coming when you say we're not going to come up there until you, until you, we know you the boss. So we only lay you, only lay you know. You know what I'm saying? Like when he got a promotion, hey, bro, what you doing? I'm happy for you. You know what I'm saying? Congratulations and genuinely mean it. All right, bro. Yeah, I mean, like, again, like, that's why when you talk about definitions, that's why I always consider my friends the, I've, this is, so I have, my closest friends, I have, they're all in, in pairs, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I have um, these two, and then I have Thad and Nick, and then I have uh, A.V. and Trey. Mm. And those are my, like, go-to six from my entire life. And all of us have, it's been over 10 years of friendship and all of that, and closer to 20, 25, 27, mm. with you guys and Thad and Nick. Um, so my, my friend group is extremely close-knit, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, um, from that perspective. And I, all of those, again, come down to us having shared values. And I think the people who you're going to do life with are the folks who are, those shared values are going to carry you through seasons. Mm -hmm. And those are the people that I would consider to be my closest of friends, because Mm -hmm. I know no matter what happens, I know y'all going to point me back to Christ if I need any advice. Mm -hmm. I know that y'all are going to make sure that I'm being a man and being accountable to Mm -hmm. my responsibilities and Mm -hmm. things around me that I committed Mm -hmm. myself to. Um, So for me, longevity, it's all, it's all rooted in what's the Again, what's the what's the thing that's tying y'all together? Yeah. If we if we only tie it together by the fact that I go to this place and you go to this place or you yeah. like shoes and I like shoes and it yeah. don't ever get nothing past that's that, it. right, right, then right, right. you're not gonna have too much longevity in that right. because when I decide to start wearing loafers, <laughs> you gonna think I sold Come out. Come on, that's it. <laughs> you know what I'm that's saying? Real. When, I, when I decide when I when I can't go to the game, when I can't go to the bar, when I can't do this, can't do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, you're gonna be sold out. So yeah. I think for longevity, again, like really locking in on what are the things that you value. Who are the people around you that value that? And being able to lean into that and, again, have that vulnerability is going to produce that longevity. Yeah. And yeah. then, like, I feel like talk, everybody talks about everything being rooted in conflict, too. I got to tell this story because we're here and so it's recorded. Me and Kanan's relationship, friendship, was started on conflict. My mom loves to tell this story. <laughs> Apparently, when we were three years old, we all first got, we, we got in first, first trouble, first, first fight, was the fact that we were in uh, uh, pre-K and... I was calling him Canaan Land, and he was calling me David, the little shepherd boy, like some church kids, and they were fighting. And then we ended up to the office, and then we've been friends ever since. So that's kind of like the, the root and the origin right. of this friendship here. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. So, right. yeah, that conflict is, has produced this. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? That we yeah. exist in right now. Yeah. So I had to put that on record. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I, I think for me, man, like, like one thing Dale just said was like, man, they stuck. Like, they not... They ain't going nowhere. I don't care what happens. I don't care what happens in life. That's my nephew. That's my sister. That ain't my sister. They, we not even blood, but that's my sister. That ain't my sister-in-law. That's my sister. That's my, these are my brothers. And it's, and it's, it's all about intention, man. And if there's one thing that I can say in, in this conversation, you need to pray for your friends. Yeah. You, need to, you, you need to go before God for your friends. You need to call their name out in the morning. You need to call their name out. I have a list in my phone of people's names I call out. I called, I, ca- I called their name out before the Lord. I called it out. When, when, he, when he got a house, I called his name out. I called his son's name out. I called their names out. When he was going through transition season, I called his name out. When he was going through transition, I called his name out. Because listen, man, you need people who can go to God when you feel low. There's some time, listen, there's sometimes I don't feel like praying. I need somebody. I need to know that my dogs is praying for me. You need and you need people that you can go to and be like, man, listen, I'm going through this right now. This ain't working. One thing I used to always say, man, me, me and this cat, when I went through the worst season of my life in this ministry, he was right there and he was right there for me to repeat the things back to him. But then after a while, he said, man, listen, I, I, you hurt. You've been through this. You've been through that. But listen, bro. After a while, you're going to have to let it go. You're going to have to move on. And I, and I have to thank him for helping me mature because I'm going to tell you something. You know when you've grown in your relationships, when somebody has done you wrong and you can have empathy of why you think of why they did it. Everybody ain't there. I've gotten there. People have done me wrong and I've literally had to sit back and say, you know what? I wonder, if, and, and this is the thing too, even the whole thing of you did me wrong. I wonder if from their perspective, they didn't do me wrong. They did what they had to do. 
You see what I'm like? Like just, just go with me for a minute, because sometimes in in, in relationships, it's like, now nah, you did me dirty. It's like, no, did you really do me dirty, or like I have a misunderstanding of what really happened, and you had to do what you had to do in the in the in the friendship or the relationship. Now sometimes people just do snake you. I ain't even gonna front. People do snake you. But one thing that the Spirit of God dealt with me one time. If you got bit by a snake, were you listening to me telling you that it was coming? Some snake bites you can't avoid. That's what I'm telling you. Some hurt you can't avoid. But when the Bible says love covers a multitude of sin, sometimes you can't see certain things page because you love them. And we always say the same thing. Man, they'll never do me like that. They'll never do me like that. And a lot of times that's pride. Because I'm putting more confidence in you than the guy that's in you. We got to always, I, I, I say this, we got to be ready for conflict in our friendships. Not looking for it, but I'm ready for it. So if something come up, all right, let's deal with it. Let's move on because I, I, I ain't let you go. So we might as well get over this. You need, you, need, you need a day or two? Okay, cool. I'll hit you up on third day. You need a week? All right, I'll hit you up next week. But you ain't going nowhere. I'll be right here. You know what I'm saying? So did this bless anybody today? This help anybody? Listen, man, can we make some noise for these gentlemen? Make some noise for them, please. We hope you enjoyed our latest message. If you feel led to be a blessing, you can give through our cash app at dollar sign ready church CLT or to our website, which is on the screen.